this is quite the honor. I wish you guys had experienced the day I had to take to get here, going through the Newark Airport and Chicago Airport. Man, at one point I thought about getting to Chicago and renting a car and driving to make it, because this is important to me. But when I found out that it was over 300 miles, I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, this has been great. What an honor for me to get this award. I did become a teacher, and it was probably the best thing I ever did in my life was get my degree before I graduated from college and was able to put it into use. I know I've made a difference with a lot of students from Roxbury, New Jersey. I used, my eighth grade coach was a big reason why I got into sports. He believed in me. He said, I want you to play football. We were migrant workers. I thought we'd have to pay for the equipment. So I know that my parents wouldn't give me the money to buy football equipment. We worked in the fields. We didn't have extra cash laying around. So I finally started playing football when I was a freshman in high school. And I was a football player. I did pretty good in college. As a matter of fact, on September the 20th, I'm going to get inducted into the West Texas State Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> 71 years old and uh, I'm finally getting inducted. But I was a football player. I signed a contract with the Kansas City Chiefs in 1975 for $18,000. And then I went and played in, for the BC Lions, signed a contract for $20,000. And Joe Blanchard, Tony Blanchard was our quarterback at West Texas State started talking to me and he would say, Merced, you could be making $85,000 a year in wrestling. Well, little did I know that it wasn't like professional wrestling. I thought I was going to sign a contract for $85,000 a year. <laughs> so I come back from playing with the BC Lions, me and Tully Blanchard, drive to Tampa, Florida, and I started training. As a matter of fact, Cowboy Bob Gordon and his father helped train me and his, may he rest in peace, Barry Orton. Both of us were breaking in at the same time. And then Hiro Matsuda would also work out with us. So about a month into the training, Terry Funk comes into Tampa to wrestle. And he calls me into the heels dressing room because back then you used to protect the business. So I go into the heels dressing room and uh, Terry says, how do you like it, my boy? And I said, I, I, I like it. I said, but I don't know if I can afford to keep working out and paying for an apartment and not making any money. He says, well, don't do any, I, I said, I think what I want to do is I want to just because I had signed a contract to go back to the BC Lions uh, in 1977. And uh, he said, let me talk to Eddie Graham. So the next morning they called me in and they booked me. And I went to Savannah, Georgia, over 300 miles from Tampa, Florida. I made 40 bucks and I spent $60 to make that trip. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I don't know how, how much longer I can do this. But before you, before you know it, uh, Jim Barnett uh, asked me to come to Georgia, and I started wrestling as Richard Blood. Uh, Terry Funk said to me, he says, how long do you plan to do this? And I, I thought, 
It took me four years to get my college education. I, I figured I was going to do it four years. You know, I graduate. And uh, he said, he started laughing. He says, my boy, it gets in your blood. So I started in 1977, and I'm still dealing with professional wrestling. And that's the best thing I've ever had to me. <laughs> Professional wrestling is like a fraternity. You know, you might hate the one person in the locker room, but if an outsider messes around with that one person, man, you, he's your brother. You're right there to fight for your brother. I mean, the most important thing that I liked, that I admired when I first started, I was just the mark because they didn't smart me up for a while. And I would watch all the wrestlers come in and shake everybody's hands. And I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. Everybody showed so much respect for everybody else. I don't know if it's happening anymore, but it did. Everybody that's here, we all experienced that. We all loved each other. We all would fight for each other. We protected each other. And we all learned from each other. Sergeant Slaughter just told me a little while ago, he says, I love working with you. I love working with you, Ricky Steve, and Rich Martel, uh, because he says, you let the heel lead and you just followed. And I told Sergeant Slaughter, everybody back then was a great worker. You know, everybody that you stepped into the ring, for the first five years, everybody that you stepped into the ring was better than you and they were teaching you night after night after night. I don't know, when I came to Minnesota, uh, I don't know if Greg remembers this, but my punches must have been pretty bad because he says, <laughs> don't throw punches to the head or the face. He said, start throwing punches in the stomach and then work, you know, you get comfortable and work your way up. And I never forgot that. And I did. And I did probably give a couple of potatoes <laughs> you know, along the way. But I also feel that the best way to throw a punch, I remember Harley Rays, we were in the Metal Royal, and he grabs me, takes me to the corner, he says, you're gonna learn how to throw a punch tonight, kid. <laughs> and uh, I was scared to death of, of Harley Rays. <laughs> Who wasn't? So he, he put himself in the bag, he says, okay, throw a punch. And I threw a punch, and I was so afraid that I was gonna potato him. And he said, lay it in, you pussy. <laughs> I think that the art of learning how to throw a punch is not being afraid to really potato somebody, because after that night, I think my punches improved a thousand percent. You know, I, I, I became a good uh, punch thrower. Uh, but, Bringing it all down tonight, I am still doing appearances, and every time I go to an appearance, the joy that I get is talking to the wrestling fans who share, I don't know about some of the wrestlers here, but I know my mind, I can remember a lot of the crap that I went through in the ring, but the fans do, and when they bring it up to me, it bring, brings back memories, and I enjoy sh sharing those with, uh, well, not hearing the fans talk to me about, thank you for my childhood, for the joy that you brought for us. <coughs> and I'm sure that's not only me that brought joys, it's all the wrestlers who have stepped into the ring because we went in there to perform, to give the people their money's worth. Back then, we wrestled in front of 50 people, and we wrestled just as hard as if we had 50,000 people. We figured everybody paid to get in, so everybody deserved a good match. And that was my attitude every time I stepped into the ring. 
Grazie, ben ragazzi, ben ragazzi. And then becoming a teacher. Again, that was the hardest job I ever did. <coughs> I remember my first substitute job in a high school. I go into the classroom and I didn't know what to expect. I'm si I'm s it was seniors and I was pretty jacked up. You know, I just got out of wrestling and some of the boys started making animal noises. Elephant noises, dogs, uh, cows. And I'm sitting there pretending like I'm trying to figure out what the sub left, uh, what the teacher left for me to do. And I said, I can't call the office. It's my first day. If I can't handle this, you know, they're not gonna hire me again. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and something, all of a sudden, something clicked. And I got up, I shut the door, and I went to the back of the room, and I figured out the boys that were doing that, they were seniors. And I said, you, 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 go to the front of the room. And, I, and they said, I ain't going to the front of the room. I said, then I used my uh, interview voice. Go to the front of the room. And they got up and went to the front of the room, I went to the back, and I said, guys, your animal noises are so good. I said, now you have an audience. I said, I want to hear some more. <laughs> you know? And they stood up in the class, I ain't doing that shit, I ain't doing that shit. I said, no, I, I love your, your, uh, your sound effects. Well, thank God, that got me through that day, <laughs> you know. I had experiences with the kindergartens, uh, 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 pre-kindergarten kids. Uh, I didn't know I was going to be teaching pre-kindergarten kids. So, two weeks into the year, the teacher comes and drops the kinder uh, pre-kindergarten kids. We're outside, and they take off running. <laughs> The whole class, and, and, and I'm blowing the whistle, and they're not stopping. So I felt like Arnold Schwarzenegger running after them, <laughs> like little chickens. <laughs> and I'm running to the to the to the up against the wall where uh, the building was at, and I said, "Guys, you can take off." You know, on your own, you gotta wait for me, and they take off running again. <laughs> so, again, here I go, and I bring them all in. I said, We're gonna go inside. We went into the gym, and I told the principal, I said, I can't do this. I'm not trained. <laughs> I'm not trained to, to, to deal with the pre kindergarten kids. But uh, it did get better, you know, and, and again, that was the best thing that ever happened to me get into professional wrestling and then become a school teacher and I have developed some friendships that I see right here that will last a lifetime and the saddest thing to me is how many of us are not here anymore may they all rest in peace because we all sacrificed every time we got on the road we sacrificed ourselves. We were working like dogs. 350 days a year is not an exaggeration. I, I just told Greg I love working for his dad because you live like humans. You know, we, we wrestle maybe 200 days a year. You know, everywhere else 350. You could have a normal life in Minnesota. So, that's my story. Thank you so much. And I am so honored to have received this award. It lasts me because I had so much respect for Luthez that it's gonna last me a lifetime. Thank you very much.